Growing up, much like any other child, I went through all the classic books. Little Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, The Sleeping Beauty. But Alice in Wonderland stuck out to me for the whimsical world it portrays, full of talking animals, shrinking foods, and childlike wonder. Today, I will be reading a short passage from the novel where Alice first sees the rabbit and follows him down the rabbit hole and eventually into the fantastical world of Wonderland. I chose this speech because while we all imagine fictional worlds and amazing adventures as children, we abandon these dreams as adults. I hope to share some of that whimsy with you today and hopefully remind you of the magic of this timeless classic. Enjoy Alice's Adventure in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading but it had no pictures or conversation in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? So she was considering in her own mind whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. But when the rabbit actually took a what out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet, for it flashed across her mind that she had never seen before a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a white to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it. Unfortunately, was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. In another moment, down went Alice after it never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way, and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly, that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down what was a very deep well. Either the well was very deep, or she fell very slowly for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. First, she tried to look down and make out what she was coming to, but it was too dark to see anything. Then she looked at the sides of the well and noticed that they were filled with cupboards and bookshelves here and there. She saw maps and pictures hung about pegs. She took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed. It was labeled orange marmalade. But to her great disappointment, it was empty. She did not like the drop of jar for fearing of killing somebody underneath, so managed to put it into one of the cupboards as she fell past it. Well, thought Alice to herself, after such a fall as this, I shall take nothing of traveling downstairs. How brave they all think me at home. Why, I wouldn't say anything about it, even if I fell off the top of the house. Which was very likely true. Down, down, down. Would the fall never come to an end? I wonder how many miles I've fallen by this time she said aloud. I must be getting somewhere in the center of the earth. Let me see. That would be 4,000 miles down, I think. For, you see, Alice had learned several things of this sort in her lessons in the schoolroom. And so this was not a very good opportunity for showing off her knowledge, as there was no one to listen to her. Still, it was good practice to say it over. Yes, that's about 
the right distance. But then I wonder what latitude or longitude I've got to. Presently she began again. I wonder if I shall for right through the earth how funny it will seem to come out among the people that work with their heads downward. The antipodes, uh, I think. She was rather glad there was no one listening in this time as it didn't sound at all the right word. But I shall have to ask them what the name of the country is. You know, please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? And what's the name Grenoble, Little Gill? She, til she tilted me for asking. No, it will never do to ask. Perhaps I shall see it written somewhere. Down, down, down. There was nothing else to do. So Alice soon began talking again. Gina, I miss me very much tonight. I should think Gina was the cat. I hope they'll remember her saucer of milk at tea time. Nina, my dear, I wish you were down here with me. There are no mice in the air. I'm afraid, but you might catch a bat. And that's very like a mouse, you know. But do cats eat fat? I wonder. And here Alice began to get rather sleepy and went on saying to herself in a dreamy sort of way Do cats eat bats? Do cats eat bats? And sometimes, do bats eat cats? For, you see, as she couldn't answer, Either questions, it didn't much matter which way she put it. She felt that she was dozing enough and had just begun to dream that she was walking hand in hand with Dinah and saying to her very earnestly, Now, Dinah, tell me the truth. Did you ever eat a bat? When suddenly, thump, thump, down she came upon a head of sticks and dry leaves and the fall was over. Alice was not a bit hurt and she jumped on to her feet in a moment. She looked up but it was all dark overhead. Before her was another long passage and the white rabbit was still in sight hurrying down it. There was not a moment to be lost. Away went Alice like the wind and was just in time to hear it say as it turned a corner Oh, my ears and whisker, I shall be too late! She was close behind it when she turned the corner but the rabbit was no longer to be seen. She found herself in a long low hall which was lit up by a row of lamps hanging from the roof. Suddenly, she came upon a little tree-legged table, all made of solid grass. There was nothing on it except a tiny golden key. And Alice's first thought was that it might belong to one of the doors of the hall. But alas, either the legs were too large or the key was too small. But at any rate, it would not happen any of them. However, on the second time round, she came upon a low curtain she had not noticed before, and behind it was a little door about 15 inches high. She tried the little golden key in the back, and to her great delight, it fitted. Alice opened the door and found that it led into a small passage, not much larger than a rat hole. She knelt down and looked along the passage into the loveliest garden you ever saw. How she longed to get out of that dark hall and wander among those beds of bright flowers and those cool fountains. But she could not even get her head through the doorway. And even if my head would go through, those poor Alice, it would be, it would be of very little use without my shoulders. Oh, how I wish I could shut up like a telescope! I think I could, if only I knew how to begin. For you see, 
so many of the way things had happened lately that Alice had begun to think that very few things indeed were really impossible. There seemed to be no use in waiting by the little door. So she went back to the table, half hoping she might find another key on it. Or at any rate, a book of rules for shutting people up like telescopes. This time, she found a little bottle on it. Which certainly, which certainly was not here before, said Alice. And round the neck of the bottle was a paper label with the words drink me beautifully printed on it in large letters.